love that introduction. <laughs> so um, thank you for being here. This is the mission budget hearing. We're going to talk about the proposed budget in more detail today than we will tomorrow. Tomorrow we actually will uh, we'll get the, this will be approved, but today is a really a good chance to dive into the numbers a little bit deeper than we will tomorrow and, and leave time for uh, uh, questions and comments. So um, thank you for being here. My name is Mark Miliotto. I serve as the Canon for Finance and Chief Financial Officer for the Diocese. I'm going to be joined this afternoon by a couple of friends who will um, uh, add some commentary to some of what we do, one of which is Michelle Wagaman, who is the chair, yeah, uh, chair of our mission budget committee. And also joining us, ah, Jeff Irwin, who is a member of our, I, I think we call it the Congregational Audit Task Force. I think it, the, the name has changed a couple of times. I think that's where we land. He's going to come on at the end of this and talk uh, about a little bit about uh, what we're doing at the diocesan level to help our congregations with audits. So um, we'll get started in a minute. I, I have to point out, okay, so at 2.45, right, mid-afternoon, a couple of hours after lunch, sandwiched in between two bishops, the last of which had dogs on her slides. <laughs> There's no way, there's no, there's no way I could compete with any of that. So I'll, you know, I'll do my best uh, and, and we'll see where we go. So um, I think the best way to uh, follow along is in your packet on page 26, there is the, the budget packet. Um, you could, there's also, if you um, went to our website and went to the um, the, the, the big book of everything, you know, all of, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the thing that has everything you need for a convention. There's a, a PDF of that. The, the beauty of the PDF is it has color. Um, what you have in your packet is black and white. And there's some graphs and things in here that look better on the PDF than they do in the black and white paper. But, so uh, we're going to go through this. Uh, just quick, a, a little bit of orientation to the report first. The, the, you know, after the, the cover page, so page 27, oh, this is the, the budget all wrapped up into one page, one summary page. Um, that's, it says general ledger category summary. The second page is taking that same budget but just sorting it in a different way, sorting it by program area, or you might think of it as department. Uh, right, sorting it uh, a little bit differently. Same numbers, just uh, same totals, just uh, ordered a little bit differently. Uh, the next few pages after that, one, two, three, uh, uh, is the general ledger detail, right? The account level detail of our budget. And that's where we're going to spend some of our time going over some of that detail here, right? The kind of detail that we wouldn't do in the full uh, business session tomorrow. Um, there's a page of staff salaries. There's a couple of graphs. And actually, I'm going to talk about the, the graphs more so tomorrow than I will today. Uh, and then some narrative. And then ultimately, the last page are the, the three budget resolutions, which will come before the full body tomorrow. So um, I want to start. Let's start on, on page 28. It says program level summary. I just want to highlight a couple of things here because this it's a unique report that because it sorts things differently than the, the, the other reports in this packet, there's a few things that pop out here that you won't see in the other pages. So I just want to quickly highlight these before we really move on to the sort of line item detail. But uh, if you look uh, down under operating expenses, you'll see diocesan convention. And if you move your eye across all the way to the right, you'll see $9,000, right? We're increasing the budget for diocesan convention by $9,000. We're going to get into a little bit more detail of that in a few minutes. Um, uh, Churchwide mission support. This is our uh, Episcopal church assessment. You'll see $3,000, right? We're, um, again, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Campus ministry, you look across, we've got $10,000 there. 
and then the College for Congregational Development, an increase of 10,000. I, I highlight these because they, they pop out here on this report in a way that you don't necessarily see it on the other reports. And we'll get into a little bit more detail of that. Uh, the, the other differences there uh, are, are there's salaries and benefits and all that sort of thing and, and, and uh, mixed in with uh, some other things. But um, anyway, all right, so let's move on. Uh, on page 29, I want to start with our, um, our operating revenue. We have really three, there's four sources of, of revenue, but, but three of them make up 99% of it. Uh, the first one is apportionment pledges. This is the support coming from our congregations. Um, we are budgeting 1,686,000. And in fact, I think, well, I'll get to this in a second. Um, an $86,000 increase. Th these are pledges coming from our congregations, right? This isn't numbers that we just plug to, to get to a balanced budget, right? This, these are real pledges coming from our congregations, up $86,000, 5.4%. This is the largest increase we've seen coming uh, in our support from our congregations in as long as I've been doing this. And this is my... 13th year of um, presenting the budget at convention. So it just, it, it, incredible generosity and, and support coming from our congregations. We're gonna dive into those numbers a little bit right here. Let's see, this is the, there we go. Um, you're gonna see this again tomorrow, but I, I wanna get into a little bit of the detail here. So, th so where did that $86,000 come from? Hopefully you can see that on the screen there, right? So the, the first line are the congregations that were pledging full apportionment last year, and full apportionment is 10% of average operating income from the last three years, right? That, that's our apportionment, and if the congregation pledges and pays that full amount, we consider that full apportionment. We have 44 congregations that uh, for 2025 are staying fully uh, uh, as paying, uh, pledging at the full apportionment level, 44 of our 70 congregations. From those 44, that's a $63,000 increase uh, in pledges. The next line are those congregations that uh, had been pledging the, the current year less than full apportionment, but for 2025 moved up. There's eight, eight congregations that moved up to full apportionment this year. That's a phenomenal number. Uh, really, and you know, having looked at these numbers myself for 12, 13 years, that is the largest increase that I've seen. Um, and from those eight congregations, that's $26,000. So the first two lines, uh, about three quarters of our congregations are paying full apportionment. Um, it was not that many years ago when it was closer to two thirds. So it has moved up. Um, uh, to almost three quarters. And so from those, that's about almost $90,000 in, in new pledge revenue um, projected for 2025. You see the, uh, there's other statuses of congregations. We have those who had been paying full apportionment who dropped down, there are three of those. Um, and that, so that we lost about $3,800 in, in operating revenue from that. And then we've got five congregations, or about 7% of our congregations that um, are not quite at full apportionment, but they're working towards it. It's a, maybe a couple thousand dollars every year, and eventually they hope to, they strive to reach that full apportionment level. Um, and, and then we've got a, a number of congregations that are fixed. There are eight congregations that uh, pay a fixed amount. Um, and of course, there's no change in that pledge. That's about 11%. And then we did have one um, that uh, was less than full apportionment and, and cut their pledge. Uh, and then we have one congregation that doesn't pledge uh, at all. So you added all that up, uh, and it's about $86,000. Um, this way. Okay. Um, then the next line of, of operating revenue, which is about a quarter of our revenue, is coming from investments, dividend and interest income. Um, we're projecting a $23,000 increase. Most of what's in here is coming from uh, the growth and income fund. The first three lines here, the dividends, these are our unrestricted reserves. 
um, that are generating dividend income, uh, $80,000, about a $2,900 increase. The extended ministries fund, this is our quasi-endowment. And by that, that means these are otherwise unrestricted funds that diocesan council has decided to treat as though it were an endowment, right? So they, they, uh, it's, it's called designated. It's, it's uh, only the earnings from it, the, the dividends from it, are used for uh, supporting operations. And that's about an $18,000 increase. And then we have a true endowment fund um, that, uh, that's generating about 63,000 uh, for the year. I, I meant to, to give the dollar amounts. The, um, the unrestricted reserves balance is about $2.1 million that's in the growth and income fund. The extended ministries fund is about $13 million. And then the endowment fund, true endowment, about 1.7 million. And then additionally, we have uh, about 1.6 million invested in what, what you might consider impact uh, investing. This is uh, monies that we have, for the most part, invested in the Opportunity Resource Fund, which is serving under-resourced, underserved communities in our region. And they use those funds um, to uh, support um, lower in, mostly lower-income communities uh, and that sort of thing. And that generates less interest, and, and we're not expecting any increase there. The, the, the increases we're seeing from the growth and income fund is just because the, the value of those investments has grown rapidly over the last few years. The payout, the dividend payout rate is still the same, um, but uh, because the balance is up, we're seeing about a, almost a 4% increase uh, in that. The third uh, category of funding for the diocese uh, is, here it's called the, the Tannehill Fund. This is, it's a perpetual trust, right? It's, it's money that we don't control. It's, a, it's a, a, a trust that is held by the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. The, the donor, um, Robert Tannehill, designated, restricted the earnings from that to come to support the diocese. So we don't control it, um, but uh, the, the, all, all of the income from it comes to us, and that's $232,000. Uh, we're not expecting any change there for next year, and that's about almost 9% uh, of our budget. And then we have a little bit of other income that comes in, uh, we, very little donation income, um, $1,000, and then the $3,000 of other income is credit card rebate. So, so we add it all up, the operating revenue is up $110,000, uh, 4.5%, um, just a really phenomenal, um, Phenomenal number for 2025, and it, and it gave uh, diocesan staff and diocesan council really a lot to work with and, and, and a lot of opportunities to, uh, to be creative about how we might want to spend and allocate uh, that money. So you add it all up, 2,570,657. So I'm going to stop there before we get to expenses and just see if anybody has any questions about the funding side uh, of our budget. All right. Well, I'll just I'll just keep going then. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, moving on to expenses, and again, so I'm on page 29. Um, you see a whole category of of salaries and benefits. Um, and I want to point out a couple of these. So, so first of all, the, the, um, when it comes to salaries, um, we closely watch inflation. And specifically, we watch CPIU um, both nationally and regionally. And uh, for, for any of you who watch the, that same number, nationally, over the past year, CPIU inflation has been about two and a half percent. Regionally, it was it's been a little higher, a little over three percent. But um, uh, we felt that a, a, a fair offering to uh, our staff for a cost of living adjustment is three percent. So that's what we have factored in here: three percent across the board for all of staff. And if you, you want to jump ahead and look to page 32, you'll see where all of those salaries 
how they break out by staff member. And this, the sum of both the salary and the SICA reimbursement for our clergy is that 941,000. Um, one other benefit category you'll see under retiree medical, we, we have a, a, a new member of our retirement community, uh, and so we had to boost the budget uh, to cover um, her health care. So you'll see a $4,000 increase there. Um, many of these other line items are tied to salary. When you increase salary 3%, the disability and the life insurance and the pension and the FICA, and then all of those go up about the same. But there is one line item here, in here that I do want to um, call out and, and do a little bit deeper dive in, and that is medical insurance. Um, the, our base plan is called the, it's a, the 90 PPO, which is a, a very benefit rich plan. The, the cost for that premium for 2025 is going up nine and a half percent. There's another plan that's even richer than that, the 100 PPO, and that is going up 13 percent. Um, we really wrestled with this, and uh, let me just say this. We, we landed on saying we will absorb that full cost this year. We, we had the luxury of being able to do that because we, we had enough money coming in. But that's not the end of the story. And so I want to invite, if, I, uh, if you don't mind, Michelle to come up because Diocesan Council really wrestled with this. Like, we can't continue 9.5% kind of increases every year. So what, what can we do longer term? And so Diocesan Council has some ideas on what to do. And uh, so, Michelle, if you don't mind, I'd, uh, coming up and, and representing Diocesan Council and tell us, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Any of, any, I think any of us in this room um, who have wrestled with the costs around health care can relate to the sort of situation that the diocese is facing. And this question actually came back from General Convention as it became clear that those dioceses like our own, who have traditionally taken very good care of our clergy and staff with, 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 a, with a high level of health care, Essentially, what's been happening is, however, that those very rich plans are being subsidized by dioceses and by those folks who have not been able to afford those plans and are coming in at lower levels. So we have, we have enjoyed subsidies that perhaps, that perhaps we should not be taking. So that's really the issue that we are facing, and certainly the church pension group also has raised those rates, as Mark just mentioned, to really reflect the full cost, the full impact of those rich plans for dioceses who opt for those. What became clear as we got this information in the late summer was that making, making huge changes in how we, how we fund healthcare was going to have real implications not only for, not only for individual staff members, but also for our parishes, that there were a lot of questions that have a very personal kind of impact. And so what our, what our plan has been, as Mark mentioned, is to go ahead and move forward with the kind of approach that we've taken, essentially with that, that PPO 90 plan, but to develop a task force to take a look at what these costs might be in 2026 and going forward, and really to pull together folks throughout the diocese, representation both from individual staff as well as our individual parishes, to really discern around this in a way that allows us to think about it, be transparent about it, and come up with a solution that works best, hopefully, for everyone. Thank you, Michelle. So, any questions about the, right, this is 51% of our budget. Are, are these 10 lines right here, salaries and benefits? So a, a lot of our budget goes in here. Um, and obviously the, the, the staff behind this are, are, are um, carrying out our, our programs, and, right? So I mean, it, it just don't think of it as just salaries and benefits, right? These, these are um, 
uh, ministries and, and programs that we are operating. So questions on any, so if you have a question, if you don't mind coming up to one of these microphones. And they look at what I take, what I'm going to need, blah, blah, blah. And there's no fee for it. And so I just wondered if you thought about bringing somebody in who might, in the insurance industry, who might help with that committee. Just a suggestion. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's not a bad idea at all. I mean, so we do, that, that, that one of the reasons we're saying this today is if there are people out here who have particular interest and, and uh, experience, in, in healthcare, we would welcome your your voice. Absolutely. And eight and a half percent. I mean, I was happy to see that because where I worked before, they planned fifteen to twenty for health insurance. It's just so through the roof and crazy. It's really hard to project. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. That you may want to think about that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no. Okay. I don't see any more. So. Let's move on. One more. Oh, one more question? No, that's Carmen. She's no, running the microphone. I was just going to run the microphone. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. But she has thoughts about our insurance. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to just sort of move forward uh, through uh, our line item budget. Uh, again, we're, we're doing more detail here than we will tomorrow, and, and that is so that you get the fuller picture of, of what our budget is, and, and that you have, so you have opportunity to ask maybe more detailed questions um, than you would in the full open session. All right, so we've got professional fees. Not a lot of change here. But, um, you'll see there's actually a decrease under outside services. Outside services are catering consultants, that sort of thing. And it looks like we're cutting the budget. What we're actually doing here is just moving. We, moving dollars from here down to meeting expenses. There, there's, you're going to see it, a few of these line items. We're moving some budget dollars around to better fit where the actual expenses are coming in. It's, so it's not an increase or a decrease. It's just we're trying to better align the budget um, with how we're, at, we're actually rolling out events and, and conferences and, and, and that sort of thing. So that's what this is, this 3,300. But when it comes to uh, buildings and grounds, we do, the, this is a real um, uh, budget increases. So the diocesan center maintenance. So um, we share in the cost of maintaining the building in which we are in. We, we share that with the cathedral. Um, uh, uh, in, in an entity known as the chapter, cathedral chapter. Uh, we have, for many years, the diocesan side of that share has been lower than it should be. We haven't, th th we went for at least 10 years where we didn't increase that number. For the last few years, we have been increasing it uh, to, to get us, to catch us up to where we should have been. And just as we were beginning to catch up to where we should have been, costs started skyrocketing. Insurance was up 15% last year. It's up 17% this coming year, right? And, and utilities are up, and it's, it, all these things are up. So we are rapidly trying to increase our share to a fair level, the, a fair share of the cost of maintaining the building. Um, and so we uh, are putting $6,500 uh, towards that for a total of $174,000 in supporting uh, the, the building that we share at 4800 Woodward. Um, and then the diocese itself, we have our own property and liability. The building in which we are in is owned by the cathedral, right? So we don't have property insurance on that. We're, we're paying, you know, a cost sharing, but um, most of our insurance expense is liability. It's liability and directors and officers and crime and sexual misconduct and all that sort of thing. Um, so while property insurance is going up seven, an average of 17% next year, 
the liability side of insurance isn't going up quite as much. It still is up, and you see here uh, we're, we're increasing that $1,000 or about 5%. So um, combined uh, about $7,500 in this category. Uh, we have uh, office expenses. I, I'm going to say office and communication together because they're, they're related. You'll see a $1,500 decrease in postage and a $3,000 decrease in outside printing and copying. And that th these things are related. These are both convention expenses. We used to distribute all of our um, convention reports by mail. We would print them. We'd g go to an outside printer. Uh, print everything and then mail it. And we're not doing nearly as much of that as we used to. So we're taking the convention expenses here and moving them down into meeting expenses um, for other areas of convention that have gone up in expense. Um, and then we get down, there's a category of, of expenses of conferences, meetings, and events. There's it's, it's hard to look at these numbers and really understand um, what we're doing here. So because there's, there's money moving from categories above and into here. And so I, I'm just going to just sort of put this down for a second and, and I'll just read off some numbers. So um, we are increasing. So it's a total of $30,000. There's about $8,000 that we're moving in here from other categories, mostly to cover convention expenses. Um, we're also increasing uh, some other events, hospitality meetings, that, that sort of thing, uh, by $6,000. Um, and we're increasing convention expense by $16,000. Uh, in here. That's what makes up, you'll see an increase of $29,700. It's those, those three things. 16000 for a convention, 8000 of monies moved from other areas into here, and then 6000 for uh, uh, hospitality, uh, other events and conferences that we put on other than convention and, and, and meetings. Um, so a total of about $30,000. And then similarly, under event, meeting, and offset, it shows as a, a a $3,000 increase to the budget, but step back for a second and um, think about it this way. The $10,000 uh, increase here, right? So th this is a, it's, it's hard to think of it because these are negative numbers, right? This is money that comes in to, uh, from the outside to help share in the cost of our meeting expenses, including the, the, the monies that you paid to buy lunches and dinners for this event, right? That money flows into here. Uh, and, and other things where we charge a, a registration fee or a cost sharing fee. But the, what makes up this change of $3,000 is uh, a reduction, a, 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 an increase in the share of the co uh, College for Congregational Development expense that we're, being, that we're absorbing into the operating budget. It costs 40, maybe $40,000 to put on the College for Congregational Development. We've now done it for three years. We've, every year we've had outside funding to pay for it. What we're beginning to do in 2025 is bring some of that cost into the operating budget. And our hope is over time we can bring more and get to the point where um, most of that expense, with, aside from a small registration fee, uh, is coming from the operating budget as a reflection of the fact that this is a high value program that we put on. So we've got 10,000 coming in there. And then going in the other way are $7,000 in um, ad additional registration fee income um, that we are anticipating coming from diocesan conventions. I don't know, Michelle, did you want to add any more? This is another one of those sort of the, something that the Austin Council really wrestled with, the fact that the cost to put on convention has risen rapidly over the last few years. It used to be $60,000 roughly, not that long ago. It's now over $100,000. And so we've been working at ways of, we've been you know, increasing the budget a little bit here and there. and and. But it has gone up so rapidly that um, it, it, we, we have to do something about it. So I, um, one thing that the Austin Council has 
decided to do is that we need, unfortunately, we need to start charging a small registration fee. And we're going to do that in 2025. Uh, $30 registration fee for delegates uh, and $10 registration fee for visitors. We think doing that will generate about $7,000 of offsetting costs to convention. On top of that, for this year and for next, uh, diocesan staff has found about $12,000 in reductions in the cost of convention. We're just not doing some things that we've done in the past, and that will save us about $12,000. Um, so anyway, you net that, the, the, right, I said there's 16,000 increase in expense, 7,000 increase in the cost sharing. So we've got a net increase of, of convention expense of $9,000. So I'll pause maybe for a second and see if there's any questions or if Michelle, if I missed something. Oh, there is another piece of it. Yes, did you? I, I just was going to make one comment. Yeah. Uh, I guess the comment that I was going to make is that, I mean, I, I, I guess I've been here for <coughs> two hours. I've already reconnected with maybe 15 or 20 people that otherwise I don't get to see. Being together at convention, it is, it is so incredibly important for us to be able to be together in person as the sort of extended body of Christ in the diocese. And so I think that really, I think, I, think the, I think the bishop feels strongly about that commitment. I think diocesan council also feels that it is, in fact, so important for us to be together, to learn together, to worship together, to deliberate together uh, the, wonder, the, the wonderful parliamentary um, uh, primer that we've gotten is going to equip us to do that more effectively. But I also just wanted to add that with that, um, with that registration fee, that we're looking at. Um, that was something we had looked to guidance from practice in other dioceses. It will also be the case that for those parishes who may have, who may face difficulty or find that to be a burden, we will also be putting mechanisms in place to support folks um, who may have those kinds of things. Yeah, thanks for adding that. You know, one more thing on this too. We're, we're going we're gonna to be back here again in 2025, but for 2026 and beyond, we're gonna, uh, we've got a, a planning group that's going to be thinking about what does convention look like going forward? Where should convention be and how much should it cost? And, you know, and, and, and it, it's important for all of us, as, as Michelle just said, about, about being together. So in person is the highest priority. Uh, we're not going to do Zoom meetings, but uh, and being together for a day and a half is another important thing. Right. So those working with those two things uh, and knowing at this point we will have a, a budget on the order of um, uh, $80,000 or something in that. Right. And, and we're, we're going to be considering what uh, convention will look like from 2026 and beyond. Um, all right, so moving on, we've got uh, travel, uh, oh no, denominational support. Um, for us to say fully, as I said a few minutes ago, to say fully assessed with the Episcopal Church and with Province 5, we need about $3,000. You see that $2,949 for TEC is the Episcopal Church, and then the province. Uh, to stay fully assessed is about $59. Um, so a total of 3000 there. We've got travel and related. Um, the last few years, as we've uh, been coming out of the pandemic, we actually have been reducing our travel. And, and um, we, uh, <laughs> we ended up cutting travel a little more than we should have in the last couple of years. We had to restore some of it. And now that we're fully out and everyone's back to a full travel schedule, we realized um, that we had gone too far. So we're putting some money back in for travel. Um, under grants, partnerships, chaplaincy support. That, so we do a budget hearing in the spring before we embark on our, our, the budget development process. And one of the things we heard from that budget hearing is um, we need additional support for our, our chaplains, chaplaincies. This is the, the college campuses. So this is University of Michigan and Michigan State. We haven't increased this uh, line item in our budget 
maybe 15 years. It's, it's been a long, long time. So um, with $110,000 to work with in this budget, we, uh, we had um, room to add to that budget. So we're adding $10,000, that's $130,000. That means $65,000 for each of those two um, ministries. We also, by the way, support the, uh, there's a campus ministry and they're, they're going to have a table out here uh, at Wayne State. It's primarily Wayne State, but it also includes Henry Ford Community College and I think it's University of Michigan at Dearborn, I think are the three schools. We support that from a restricted fund. It's, it's from a, um, you don't see it in the operating budget, but I just want you to know that even though this operating budget shows those two ministries, we also support that third one. Um, and then lastly, under equipment, we're adding $1,400. We've, we're, we're trying to become more and more digital, more paperless, and, and we need the, the software, uh, and the, the subscription expense uh, to, uh, to roll that out. So we're adding a little bit of money there. So you, you add it all up, $110,000 increase in expenses, $110,000 increase in our income. We've got a balanced budget of $2,570,657. So I'm going to stop there. Again, questions, comments, um, and we're, I guess we've got a few minutes for that. I see one back there. Do, uh, do you want us to bring the mic to you? or <clears throat> Who can get there first? There we go. Um, I just had one quick question about the liability insurance. Does that include like cybersecurity and those things that have to become more digital? Is that, has that had any major impact on our liability insurance? It, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's a major impact, but, but it is in there. That is a new thing. Cybersecurity is a, uh, a new form of insurance. Mm, maybe two or three years ago was added, uh, but you're right. It, uh, uh, the, ran you know, the ransom, ransom thing, yeah, right? I mean, that's a real thing. And yes, we do have insurance for that. It, it's, it's added, I want to say, hundreds of dollars, not thousands. I see a question. Mark, I'm sorry if I missed this at the beginning. Yeah. Where do things stand on 2024 actual? Uh, we've got the 2023 actual, yep. 2024 budget, and I believe we're on a calendar year basis, so we've still got another three months to go. I'm just interested in where we're trending and what your forecast is. Yeah, so we are going to be very close to our budget, and uh, I think I've got that. Yeah, there is a column here for 2023. We we ended 2023 with a surplus of $1,300. We're trending towards a similar sort of number for 2024. The um, the apportionment pledge payments coming in are coming in stronger than we had budgeted. I said eight congregations have moved up to full apportionment. Two of those actually moved up in 2024, even after they had turned in their original pledges, they upped it to the full apportionment and started paying in 2024. So we are seeing, I, I expect we're gonna exceed our budget on the revenue side, and our expenses are gonna pretty much offset that. The, the, we are still short on our budget for convention, for example, we're gonna be over budget in this. Um, but as, as a staff, we are watching closely to see if there's other areas that we can hold off on spending if we need so that we can offset that. But we also have the um, fortunate enough that it looks like our operating revenue is going to uh, exceed our budget, maybe on the order of $10,000. So, um, and, and that's good because we're gonna need it. But so we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna end very close just like we did this past year. All right. Well, the, the, here here ends the budget presentation. But <laughs> I do want to uh, invite uh, Jeff Irwin up because one other I said at the beginning that we wanted to talk a little bit about audit. There's some exciting things going on uh, uh, at the diocesan level in supporting our congregations in doing their annual audits. And there's still more work to be done, um, but uh, we have some new development, and I want to invite Jeff up 
to describe uh, briefly about what's going on when, on that front. So, Jeff. Thank you, Mark. Um, as Mark said, I'm Jeff Irwin. I'm from St. Paul's in Lansing. Just want to comment a couple things about our process here at, at the Dyson level for congregations. I just completed a term on the Board of Trustees, and my comments are, going to, are coming out of that. It's kind of a separate thing, but it was born out of the, uh, the board, of, board of Trustees issues we faced. You may or may not be aware, but every congregation in the diocese is required to have some form of an audit. Sometimes it's done by a CPA, but most commonly it's done in, internally with a group of uh, members of your congregation. The problem is, a lot of congregations are failing, failing to meet that requirement. It's a, it's a pretty big number, unfortunately. There's consequences to that. And one of the things that we observed on the Board of Trustees was you can't get grants you may otherwise qualify. Uh, many times they were approved. Trothway Downs is the one most notable one. And it would be not uncommon that four or five grants would be approved. Two to three of those were on hold until they got their audit done. So, um, Bishop Perry uh, asked for some folks to try and help with that, and myself, uh, Mark, and Kathy Grosner and Kay Bell on the committee agreed to try and work to, to get help, help with the solution. I'm not saying we've got the solution, but we've done a few things that might help. Uh, there's going to be some things coming out being issued to rectors and treasurers, but uh, I guess the thing I want to talk to most immediately is uh, Mark and myself are going to be holding a Zoom training class, as it were, on audit process to try and help those that do volunteer to do an audit do so. The exact date hasn't been set, but it'll be in mid-March. Um, that's We think about the best time for folks to be preparing to start their audit, so that'll be the date, approximately. It'll, it'll be coming out shortly. Um, if you can't attend the live performance, as it were, it will be recorded. So it'll be available. We'll see how it goes from there. Um, if there's you know, a need for a second session in the future, we will consider that and so forth. Um, so if you're volunteers, your folks that volunteer to do an audit, we'd like to encourage them to attend this session. It's also open to anybody else interested, treasurers, wardens, rectors. I don't know how many people might be interested in that, but you're, you're welcome to learn we about all deeply interested. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I appreciate the enthusiasm. It's rare to hear when the topic is audited. But in any event, um, that, that's the plan. Um, and so stay tuned for some announcements. They'll be, they'll be sent, as I said, to, to uh, those that ha have to deal with it, um, the rectors and the treasurers of, of each congregation. Thank you for your time. Oh, is there a new question? Is that a question about budget or audit or anything? But yeah. Uh, Ian Jeff Former, there was a discussion at one point of trying to put together a team of non congregational members. For example, I'm treasurer of Christ Church here, or getting treasurers or other interested people to do audits of other congregations, possibly in alternating years or every third year, just to get a, another view when you're not getting a CPA on it. I was just wondering if that is still a discussion or has that been shelved because of what else is going on? No, so that, that is still in the works. We decided to take this in stages, and the first stage is to write a simplified uh, procedure manual, which we have, and, and that's what we're going to be uh, working with in the training. The, the, the next step is to assemble a, a group uh, of people that can go around to our congregations, maybe for a small fee, maybe you, you pay their travel fee or something, or you know some nominal amount to come out, and, and there would, so we would have a, a team of people who were trained to do audits. That's, that is still on the table, it just has not come together yet, as we, as we decided to focus on the procedure manual and getting some training out first. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. All right, well, thank you, everybody.